To perform this procedure, you will need no clean flux, a number three solder wick, and a blade tip. Note that one side of the blade tip is straight, while the other side is beveled. When using the blade tip, place the beveled side toward the board surface. Select a solder wick and tip that are similar in size to the pads being desoldered. If the wick or blade tip are too large, there is a risk of damage to the surrounding areas of the board. To begin the procedure, flux the area to be desoldered and the solder wick. The flux will enhance the wetting action of the solder. Using a straight down and straight up motion to place the wick and iron in contact with the pads, allow the solder to flow into the solder wick. Remove the wick and the iron at the same time. Do not slide the iron on the pads or on the board. Sliding may result in damage to the pads or the circuit board. A good practice is to work to the inside of the component footprint. Working to the inside allows clearance from surrounding components and allows the operator to work at a lesser angle to the board surface. Watch now as your instructor demonstrates what happens when the iron is removed before the solder wick rather than with the solder wick. The wick is now attached to the pads. If this occurs, do not panic. Do not pull on the wick or damage will occur to the pads and the circuit board. Simply add a little more flux and reheat the connection. Lift the wick and the iron from the pads at the same time. When all of the pads are desoldered and level, Clean the area with isopropyl alcohol and a brush. Move the brush in a circular motion to loosen and dissolve any residues or other contaminants which may interfere with further soldering operations. Wipe the area dry with a lint-free cloth. The pads are now ready for the installation of a new component.